It's 10 a.m. Bangkok time. So good morning to all of you from Bangkok. But then we also realize you're all joining us, some of you at fairly inconvenient hours, early in the morning in Europe, late in the evening in the Pacific, and in the afternoon in other places. Welcome everyone to the launch of the Asia Pacific One Country, One Priority Program, One Priority Product Program, which has just been launched by FAO last year at the level of headquarters. And today we will be launching this program in the Asia Pacific region. And to do that, we have a number of distinguished speakers who will explain to us the importance of this program, the relevance of this program, and how it will contribute to agri-food systems transformation in this region. Agri-food system transformation is at the center of FAO's mission for the next 10 years. And this has been outlined in our strategic framework. So to know more about our work in this region and how one country, one priority product will help us to advance towards the goals of sustainable agriculture, food systems transformation and to the SDGs, I now first invite the Assistant Director General and Regional Representative of the FAO Office for Asia and the Pacific in Bangkok, Mr. Jong Jin Kim. Mr. Kim, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sirida. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and even very good early morning to some colleagues joining from Rome. Greetings to all of you from FAO Region Office for Asia and Pacific based in here, Bangkok, Thailand. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the regional launch event of One Country, One product, pro, Priority Products, or we call it simply OCOP in Asia and the Pacific. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to the regional launch event of this uh, OCOP. Particularly, I'm honored to witness the very high level ministerial participation in this event today. I would like to extend my sincere appreciation and gratitude to the honorable ministers and the senior officials of member countries, as well as ECMOD, ITC, and Grow Asia, and others for joining us today to share their excellent experiences. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there is an urgent need to transform agri-food system to become more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable with a view to achieving the sustainable development goals. The Asia and Pacific region has still a high prevalence of poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. A compounding issue is a parallel increase in overweight and obesity in the region. The coexistence of triple burden of multi, uh, malnutrition indicate that the current agri-food system failed to deliver sufficient and the nutritious foods to meet the healthy diet requirements for everyone. Today, global food supply relies on a few crops Animal and, uh, and animal products. Indeed, 75% of food currently produced and consumed comes from just 12 species. Low production diversity, focusing on carbohydrate dense food contributes to unbalanced diets, leading to persistent malnutrition. The COVID-19 pandemic has significantly disrupted the lady fragile agri-food system, 
while even before that most of staple products produced had already reached their upper yield potential. But the pandemic exacerbated vulnerable food supply chains and the food related logistics and services, which have been severely affecting food security and livelihood, especially among the most vulnerable population. The conflicts in several countries in the region have further jeopardized food security and the prospect of full recovery from the pandemic. When we talk about building back better, we need to use the opportunity to transform agri-food systems to be more efficient, resilient, inclusive, and sustainable. Diversifying agricultural production systems can offer a tangible and affordable solution to those issues. Through the production of a specific crops or special ag agro products, local food system can strengthen to increase the availability, affordability, accessibility of diverse and nutritious food while building resilience to climate change, uncertainties, and conflicts, while increasing farm income and the improving livelihood of local communities and preserving social and cultural traditions. Special agro products are agricultural products with unique qualities and the special characteristics associated with the geographic location and the farming practices. They are important examples of agricultural products which contribute to ensuring food security, healthy diet, and improving farmers' livelihood while protecting the environment and biodiversity. The Asia-Pacific region has a huge food heritage and diversity, offering a wide range of unique special agro-food with the comparative advantage and the potentials of integration into high-value domestic and international market to be competitive, inclusive, profitable, and sustainable. The OCOP, One Country, One Priority Product Initiative has been developed to support FAO members, uh, member states to transform agri-food system to become more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. And it's an excellent vehicle through which members can accelerate and showcase the better and the green development with their special agro products. Let's not forget that the birth of OCOP was inspired by One Village, One Product Initiative, a local community movement driving rural development and the economic revitalization, which originated in Japan in 1979. Many Asian countries adopted this movement and have since developed and diversified their own homegrown models. We would therefore like to build this OCOP upon this already rich foundation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want to highlight that OCOP takes a systemic approach to connect production, processing, marketing, and consumption. It intends to provide a holistic framework with a set of innovative and effective solutions to address interlinked challenges that smallholders are facing. Production is the foundation. With no productivity, there can be no competitiveness. Science, technology, innovations, including digitalization, are key to improving productivity. We'll hear about the way to, uh, to do this during this forum today. 
connecting production and trade is an important area too. If no connectivity, then difficult to secure profitability. It is important to ensure value addition, access to market, promotion and trade facilitation to be connected with the production of a special agro product. The smallholder farmers is our primary target. To improve their productivity, competitiveness, and for profitability for smallholder farmers, OCOP will focus on identifying, demonstrating, and promoting effective and for innovations. And we will hear more about this, including all important financing innovations. I would like to highlight that OCOP is a country-owned, country-led initiative. I encourage members to identify a priority product with established country programs and the clear gaps requiring technical assistance. We understand that different countries have different priorities, different environments and the different areas for technical support. There's no one size fits all for this OCOP. Finally, I look forward to collective efforts from all relevant partners, governments, research institutions, universities, farmers' cooperatives, civil society, private sector, all of them to engage, demonstrate, share knowledge and experiences, and to transfer technologies and innovations for this special agro product development to help our region and the world achieve the SDGs. Together, we can achieve better production, better nutrition, better environment, and a better life for all, leaving the one behind. Thank you very much for your attention. Over to you, Sivita. Thank you, Mr. Kim, for providing that excellent background as we talk about the launch of the OCOP in the Asia Pacific region. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and while we have got the program started, we, have now, we are now approaching almost 200 participants, which outlines the high level of interest in this region. And as a knowledge agency and as a knowledge sharing organization, we encourage you to use this as a forum for providing your expertise and your knowledge and sharing it across the region. While we are going through the webinar, you're more than welcome to introduce yourself on the chat. And I can see many of you are doing that, as well as contribute your ideas and experiences on one country, one priority product or similar programs that you're aware of and have the knowledge about. We'll be very happy to learn from all the knowledge that is around the table here. At this point, I now I invite Ms. Beth Bechtol, the Deputy Director General from, of FAO, who's based in FAO headquarters, who will be giving the opening remarks. Uh, she's unable to join us live because of other commitments, but we have a video message from her. So Secretariat, please play the video. Excellencies, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and good afternoon to you. It is my pleasure to join you virtually to mark today's important launch event of a special initiative. FAO's Director General, Dr. Chu Dong Yu, officially launched the green development of special agricultural products, one country, one priority product, now referred to as OCOP, in September of 2021. OCOP is a global action, and we are implementing it now in specific regions across the world. In March, we launched in Africa. 
with an event that was attended by over 1,000 stakeholders, including representatives from FAO members, our country and regional offices, academia and research organizations, civil society, private sector, and resource partners. Today, we launch in Asia Pacific, and it is terrific to see ministers and partners from across South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and the Pacific all joining today. I would like to congratulate the governments, as well as FAO Regional Assistant Director General J.J. Kim and his team for spearheading OCOP in Asia Pacific. OCOP was developed to address the increasingly complex set of challenges faced by smallholders and family farms. Our shared and ultimate objective is to contribute to and achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. To get there, to achieve zero hunger, to eliminate poverty, and to address inequalities, we need to produce more, but we need to do it with less. OCOP provides targeted actions to address the barriers to this progress, helping smallholders and family farms to develop and advance their enterprises and ultimately transform their livelihoods. OCOP fits with national and regional priority programs, helping to deliver on the FAO strategic framework for 2022 to 2031 and the transformation to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life, leaving no one behind. Dear colleagues, this region is especially important. More than 50% of the world's population lives in the Asia Pacific region, where agricultural development and rural livelihoods are a top priority. FAO's core leadership, our resource and development partners, pay close attention to the region, which has a long and rich history of agricultural development. China, India, Afghanistan, and Pakistan are considered to be the earliest and largest centers of origin and diversity of cultivated plants. Many plants and crops that have become worldwide favorites come from Asia Pacific. Rice, tea, chickpea, soybeans, buckwheat, radish, cucumber, sugarcane, black pepper, cotton, millet, and fruits, such as pears, peaches, plums, and many others. But the potential of many crops grown in the region is still not fully utilized. OCOP is designed to bring opportunities to develop sustainable food value chains and to promote selected special agricultural products to regional and international markets. It's important that we all embrace this opportunity and engage together. The success of OCOP depends on our collective support and robust contributions from all stakeholders across regions and across sectors. This means involving researchers, universities, farmers, cooperatives, and private sector entities to demonstrate, to share knowledge and experiences, and to transfer innovations and green technologies. OCOP is a country-led and country-owned initiative. It needs strong government leadership and commitment. Our OCOP Secretariat stands ready to initiate this work together and provide support that is needed to successfully implement field projects and other activities. Thank you again to each of you for being with us today, for your interest and your engagement with all of us here at FAO. I look forward to joining efforts with you in the coming months to drive the change that is needed for farmers and rural communities. We thank Deputy Director General Beth Bergdahl for those very interesting 
remarks and for setting the scene as we begin to learn more about the program and to give us an overview of the global action on OCOP. We, I now have the honor to invite Mr. Jang Yun Sha, the director of NSP at FAO headquarters, who is leading the program. Over to you, Mr. Sha. Thank you for joining us very early in the morning from Rome. Thank you very much, Center, Surrender, the facilitator of this meeting. Honorable ministers, distinguished, distinguished Assistant Director General of FAO, JJ Kim, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm very pleased to provide you some key on the OCOP. In my presentation, I would like to brief you about the four major components. Why to do the OCOP? What to do the OCOP? How to do the OCOP? The then, who to do the OCOP? Now, why to do the OCOP? Nowadays, we are living in a world full of change and of challenge. The major challenge we want increased productivity, ensuring health doubt, reduce crop and food losses, save water, and optimize the use of minimizing agricultural chemical input and mitigate the climate change. How can we make it? The solution will be green agricultural is a key approach for sustainable development in the context of a current global challenge by ensuring food security, improving human welfare and providing decent work for all without depleting nature resource while the health earth ecosystem. So the green development of agriculture, special agriculture products, what we call the SOP, which will promote all kinds of agriculture products with a unique quality and a local characteristic, having a potential to be integrated into local, national, regional, and global market by optimizing positive component, minimizing negative component impact, and maximizing integrated agriculture profit. So our objective have four major objectives. Number one, facilitate development of a sustainable and the inclusive value chain for family farming and small holder by putting family farm central production at the center of intervention. Second, support members by assisting implementation of a country program framework more concretely. Number three, strengthening the implementation of FEO strategic framework 2022 to 31. Supporting the transformation to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food system for better production, better nutrition, better environment, and a better life, leaving no one behind. We can be built to achieving the UN SDG for the 2030 agenda, particularly SDG 2 and 1, by promoting green innovation for sustainable <coughs> agricultural production. So what we should do, there is a key 
five major principles. But in a summary, it's important. This initiative designed is a collaborative design. It's a country-led implementation. And the second is a demand-driven and a comparative advantage-oriented approach. Number three, integration production with the value chain approach. Number four is approach centered on agro ecology and region and the production system to promote green technology. And lastly, we take a multidiscipline, multidiscipline approach and the engagement with the different stakeholder, government, research, academia, extension, NGO, private sector. In the summary, we have four major character of OCOP, we call the four inclusiveness. Number one, country inclusive, all relevant members, whether you're developing country, developed country are encouraged to join the OCOP. Second, productive inclusive. All kinds of agricultural products in gate can be covered. And number three, all the value chain covered. We focus on production, but also include some other element of the value chain. And the lastly, it's stakeholder inclusive. All relevant stakeholders are welcome for joining OCOP. So what is the major area for our working on? There's a four major area. We call it green. Number one is the green production. We're going to have a cover of five key technology from a seedling to harvest. And then there's three technology for storage. We call the green storage. We have three key technology from a post harvesting until storage. And then number three is green processing. Also, we have three major key technologies on site processing, low carbon and high efficiency processing, and the byproduct of value added processing. Number five, four, and the four technology for green marketing, including green price mechanism, green marketing strategy, green brand strategy, and the green service strategy. So what is our expected outcome? We expected four major outcome. Number one, productive and resilient production system are created. So in this case, the productivity increased by five to 15%. And the value added by 30 to 50% through processing of a selected SAR. This means contribution to better production. Second is the food security and the nutrition is ensured by increasing the quality, productivity, and the diversity of a selected SAR in combination with reduced crop and the food losses and waste by 30, 10 to 30%. And a fair and the efficient market access and the trade so that can to better nutrition. Number three, environmentally, environment is substantially improved. The use of agriculture inputs is reduced by 10 to 30%. Reduce the gas, greenhouse gas emission, land degradation, and biodiversity losses. So that contribution to better environment. Now, lastly, inclusive economic growth is ensured. Livelihood of a smallholder and the family farmers improved through the creation of a decent job and an increasing income by 30 and 550% as well as increased involvement of different 
social group youth girl women in promoting a global action so contribution to better life so what is our expected output and we expected high five key component of output number one establish technical network for innovation and transformation of green development of a SARP to five pilot site. Second, and disseminate a series of a technical package for green development of a SARP. Number three, produce a set of a green enabler for green development of a SARP. Number four, formulate an efficient market access platform for green development of a SARP. Lastly, set up an efficient correlation mechanism for green development of SARP nationally and nationwide. So what is our planning for budget planning? This OCOP is very dynamic and very inclusive. So we follow FEOUN this criteria for country's category and provide some support is a share cost. And like a least developed country, and then the project will be support 80 to 90%. Co-funding by the country will be 10 to 20%. And the other developing country and the project will be support and the 60 to 70% and co-funding by 30 to 40%. Economic in transition and the pro in this country for 20 to 30% will be provided by project and the co-funding will be 80%. Even developed nation can be also enjoyed and the project will be supported less than 10%, over 90% will be by their own funding. So what is the time plan now? What is time planning for it? And the 2021, we already done, so developed this global action, launched in headquarter, and also established a mechanism in headquarter. So 2022, the first semester, we have launch events for all the RE5 FPO5 region, and then set up the pilot, and then start the demonstration, and then get some more experience. 2022, 2023 to 24, with large scale extension for all the products. And then last year, 2025, we'll make a conclusion of the vaccine and see what the way forward. So now, how can we do OCLP? And the three major, number one is coordination and implementation. At FU headquarter, on the global level, and a global steering committee is set up at FU headquarters already, and then chaired by FUDG, co-chaired by DDG BAT. And then under this committee, we have IPPC secretarial, on COP secretarial, hosted by FU and NSP division. So I'm the one executive secretary for this OCOP. Later on in the regional level or regional organizing group will be set up for each region, coordinated for implementation of OCOP, be chaired, will be chaired by a regional agency. And then later on also a working group will be established to support regional organizing group. And the last stage at the national level, if the project country, they should set up a national implementing implementation task force. And then should be chaired by senior officer of responsible ministry. And then there will be OCOP work team will be established to support national task. And then we should do some synergy within the FAO, a link with the relevant FAO initiative, like hand to hands, Green City, Southern Vintage, Digital Vintage. Also, we should link with the relevant FEO program and the TCT, South South Corporation, Sustainable Dry Land, Full Army Control, 
equally important agricultural heritage system. And lastly, we should build technical synergy with all relevant FBO initiative program at the global, regional, and the national level to support and contribute to implementation of this global action. And last, how we can do it and for external cooperation. And the major, and mainly we have three category. Number one, technical cooperation, mobilizing technical resource from research, training institution, as well as various technical products from private sector at the global, regional, the national level. And the secondly, enhance cooperation for fundraising, fundraising globally through donation from a financial institution, organization, foundation, private sector, etc. And the lastly, and work on human resource cooperation. We welcome all kinds of type and in kind of contribution worldwide to support and the contribution to this great initiative. And then now who will do it? In this answer, the, the country owned and the country led initiative. So start from today's lunch events, all the country are encouraging to apply the country project. And then now here is some principle here, participant member, all the members are eligible to join the OCLP with the priority one located in the tropical region, dry land and mountain region, this is a priority region. Number of support SARP, only one SARP to be supported for each members, members. With more selection, it's okay, but you should have your own funding. We call the one plus N model. And the type of selection of SARP, and we are going to have two phases plant products and food, cash crop, horticulture, and the forest to be supported at the first stage. And later on, we have animal products, livelihoods, and the fishery will be done in the second phase. The area of support, the production of will be support, plus one or two aspects of other value chain element, like storage, processing, or marketing with more select allowed through the members of own funding support. This is a template for project application for. Now the concept notes for project application, we have line major component. And later on, we have already and the, and the detailed action plan. And with 66 page, it's very long. Everything is there, how to apply the country project. Now, submission and approval of this important deadline. And then we hope in the March and April, submission from a member countries, from member country to FEO country office. And then second stage will be from March, April to May, with evaluation by FEO regional office. And then FEO office will submit to headquarters in May or June. So, and then headquarters secretarial will make a consolidation. And then in the first semester, by the end of, we should have make decision who is the first around of demonstration and the pilot country. So this whole time zone, so time is very hurry. And for more information, please contact us. We have OCOP secretarial. Also, you can contact with NSP Plant Production and Protection Division. Thank you very much. Over to you, Strenda. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. So Dr. Shah provided us a global overview of the entire program and what it will achieve. I'm sure all of you found this very informative and we are open here all the time to get more requests on how you would like to apply to this program and how we can develop projects. But to give more information on that, and especially on the regional aspects, and which are very prominent in the Asia Pacific, 
the various programs that are there under OCOP. We now have um, the presentation by Ms. Shuan Li, who is the regional lead for this program and the senior policy officer at the FAO Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific in Bangkok. Over to you, Shuan. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good morning, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to share the regional uh, the implementation plan, which gives some more regional facilities um, why, what, and how we're going to impl implement OCLP in the region. Okay, be very quickly, we will give the regional context on the, farm, uh, on the food system, and I will uh, then follow by the what are the SAPs um, proposed by the countries in the region, and what is the, our regional organization plan uh, in Asian Pacific. To start with, um, as JJ and the ADG mentioned, we have pretty kind of the hunger malnutrition situation are getting serious, especially during the COVID-19 and also uncertainties in the global politics uh, arena. So uh, here we have, uh, the region have almost 50% of the global undernourished people uh, in 2019, and it's getting uh, more severe due to the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. And as we know, the malnutrition is um, there. There is a leading cause for persistent nutrition, uh, malnutrition is the poor dietary diversity, and it further on was uh, due to their very limited production diversity. And this connection gives an indication of the what is kind of entry point for us to make their uh, their intervention. As we can see, there is the low direct diversity uh, in many of the, our countries uh, in our LDCs uh, and or in general in our developing countries in general as well. And we also have the low production diversity in many of our countries. And primarily in this region, we are having the uh, reliance on the stable, uh, the, like, such as the rice. So here, if we look at the total production gaps, and also on the nutrition gap, these are quite significant, especially in terms of the rose nutritious food that can deal with new, uh, micronutrient deficits. If we situate into the context of the resource constraint on climate change, on the water scarcity, on the, um, all this kind of the, uh, you know, the, um, on the biodiversity loss. And if we also look at growing demand, also changing diet, uh, from their, um, their um, urbanization and also uh, their uh, different uh, changing patterns, then we're going to see food system is required to change for diversification. So what are the SAPs? Can, many countries may have the query, are we going to promote diversification or what, for promoting their one product only? Actually, we are promoting diversification. And here, if you look at agrobiodiversity, there are many types of agrodiversity, including the crops, livestock, fisheries, and so on. And within this, um, there are special, the speci uh, uh, there are different variety and, spe uh, and species. There were a bunch of their special agro product as opposed to their stable crops or stable of uh, their fruits. And within this, we used uh, one country, one priority product at the entry point to address their special agro product, their development. So we are in under uh, the principle of the diversification versus their specialization. So here, um, if you look at in our region, uh, or even in the globally, we have a really um, huge of the agro diversification uh, available, potential available. However, 70% of the wood on uh, their food comes from only 12 plants and five animals, uh, their uh, species. And out of the 30,000 of their uh, edible plant species, 7,000 actually can be uh, tested uh, already edible, but only 100. Uh, even less than only 62 crop species are currently used as a major supply of their nutrients. But if you look at our countries, we have already looked into again on the hidden, hung, hidden, hidden treasures of the underutilized species and promote special uh, agro product 
uh, on the OCOP. Here are a number of their preliminary proposal from the countries who has identified such as the red rice, quinoa, breadfruits, and uh, pine nut, ceramic, banana, coffee, taro. So we can see they have a lot of different feature as the nutritious or health benefit and also climate resilient. In the meantime, we see a lot of the geographic indication product in the region. As we see, OCOP has uh, uh, related, but not limited to geography indication product. And in our region, we have a lot of very uh, successful um, or at different stage of development of the GI product as well. So what we're going to do in the region? Let's start with the, uh, what is kind of the common challenge of the development for the SAPs. So as we have seen, the production, post-harvest, processing, marketing, and consumption has been fragmented. And normal, we see this kind of uh, the disconnect between the different, the different part of the value chain is kind of gen a generic challenge for our countries. So it leads to their uh, low productivity, low value addition, low competitiveness, no profitability, and also no connectivity. So how we can really help to um, get their change uh, into, uh, into better, we need to strengthen their uh, systematic approach and strengthen the governance to connect different major component. So in terms of our intervention uh, towards uh, the implementation, we have these five major uh, their, uh, areas of interventions, coordination mechanism. Second one is enablers from policy, legal, financial, institutional interventions. Third one is the technical packages. Fourth one is improved market access. Number five is technical network for innovation and knowledge sharing. And it will, it will apply for farm production, post-harvest, processing and marketing trade. And at this stage, we will cover depend on country needs, but we will certainly will include production, which is one of the fundamental for the implementation. And here we will promote climate resilient and also nutrition sensitive agriculture in the integrated manner. And we should not forget, as JJ mentioned, if uh, they're in our region is rich for their, a lot of their uh, good experience, such as the OVOP, one village, one product, which is well connected to production and the trade. And we have many countries are successful in this initiative. Here is a list of countries, uh, select countries, which has implemented OBOP schemes in the region. And also look at geography indications. It's another effective uh, tool to connect production and trade. It is linked to um, connect between place, people, and the product. And we can see it is the legal instrument boost, uh, that can boost the trade and will be able to get their uh, access to their foreign market where there is the GI uh, regime is available. We also look into the many kind of digital tools and technologies such as open science to identify where are the world's product coming from. It is limit, it's not limited to their drug indication product, but open for all the special agro product that will allow to identify their where are uh, what are the kind of environmental uh, their features and how it will be better access to their consumer through the traceability. So um, what we were gonna to do, the approach will be, we will emphasize the innovative solutions from technical, from strategy, economical, policy, legal, and also agribusiness and environmental com um, dimensions to share, share all these kind of the best practice within the countries and we will highlight country specific the cases with success stories and lessons learned for our regional OCOP platform. So here's a platform that we're going to hear from their experience from all. So in order for us to move forward, we have established their regional implementation organization structure. So in, it is open for all, all the countries as Dr. Shaw mentioned. And it's, we already have the six pilot countries in the region, and we are you know, to support all the countries to have the good implementation. RAP has uh, established the, their coordination lead by their uh, ADG and with different task force team. And we also propose for the countries 
who uh, will join this event or join this initiative to have national coordination mechanism between um, their steering committee and task force uh, and can set up between the government and FL together. So as Dr. Shaw mentioned, here is their project document that we invite all the members to prepare their country uh, project proposal. And last but not least is very importantly, we need partnership, we need strength and partnership from their uh, different stakeholders to have this uh, the multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholders uh, collaboration. And in FAO, we have the high high and DVI other initiative will also join together to support countries. I'd like to give the credit to our partners who has been supporting our, uh, our pilot countries like Macon Institute, Biversity International and KG and KG uh, KVG in sub uh, areas. And we also appreciate today, you are going to hear many of the partners today to share their experience, such as the uh, ECMO, ITC, and University of the, um, the UVA, uh, et cetera. So with this, I thank you very much for your joining. Thank you, Shuang. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that was the regional overview, which gave us a very rich presentation on the opportunities in the region and how they can be utilized under the OCOP program. So uh, we see on the chat, there is a lot of interest and a lot of messages going back and forth on how this program can actually be implemented. So to all those, <clears throat> so all those of you who are interested in agencies, organizations, you may please contact your country office. We have 17 country offices in the region and the sub-regional office in Samoa. So you're welcome to contact those offices. If you do not have a country office in your region, then please contact the regional office and specifically Shuan Li, whom you just heard. So at this point, we will now shift gear and we will now hear from the countries in the region and from our member states on their perspective on OCOP and also on some of the great initiatives that they already have undergoing in their respective countries. So to, to start that off, we will first have the speech from His Excellency Siarul Yasin Limpo, the Minister for Agriculture, Indonesia. Uh, His Excellency is not able to be here with us today, but he has kindly sent us a video message. Secretary, please play the video. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam sehat untuk kita semua. Yang saya hormati asisten Dirjen FAU untuk wilayah Asia Pasifik, para Menteri Pertanian yang sempat hadir yang sama saya hormati, peserta pertemuan yang sama-sama berbahagia. Ini merupakan suatu kehormatan bagi saya diundang pada acara peluncuran tingkat regional untuk inisiatif FAO terkait satu negara, satu produk prioritas. One country, one priority product. Kami sampaikan apresiasi yang tertinggi kepada FAO atas inisiatif global ini sebagai upaya mendukung proses transformasi sistem pangan melalui pengembangan komodisi pertanian yang memiliki karakteristik spesifik spesial berbasis green agriculture. Sebagaimana dia menahankan dalam undang-undang kami nomor 18 2012 tentang pangan, pemerintah Indonesia berkomitmen membangun sistem pangan dan pertanian yang semakin healthy, diet nutritious, inclusive, equitable, resiliency, dan sustainable. Melalui undang-undang tersebut kami terus berupaya mewujudkan sektor pertanian yang makin maju, mandiri, dan modern melalui penguatan ketahanan pangan dan daya saing produk pertanian. Bagi kami, hal ini sangat krusial karena terkait jaminan pemenuhan hak pangan yang beragam. 
bergisi dan aman bagi 273 juta masyarakat Indonesia. Kami menegaskan secara konkret komitmen ini untuk dengan mengangkat penguatan sistem pangan dan pertanian sebagai salah satu isu prioritas kelompok kerja pertanian G20 Presidensi Indonesia. Hadirin yang sama berbahagia, peran sektor pertanian di Indonesia saat ini cukup signifikan yang terlihat dari kontribusinya terhadap total PDB mencapai 16 persen dan menyediakan lapangan kerja bagi hampir setengah total penduduk Indonesia. Dalam dua tahun terakhir di masa pandemi COVID-19, pertanian menjadi sektor terpenting dalam mendukung percepatan pemulihan ekonomi Indonesia. Untuk mendorong ketahanan pangan hingga ke level rumah tangga, kami secara konsisten menggalakkan program pekarangan pertanian lestari dalam rangka mempertuat ketahanan pangan keluarga melalui diversifikasi pangan lokal dan promosi pola makan yang sehat. Kami juga terus mendorong peningkatan kesejahteraan petani diantaranya dengan menghasilkan produk hortikultura yang berdaya saing dan berkelanjutan. Di masa pandemi ini, produk hortikultura banyak dicari untuk meningkatkan imun serta mendukung healthy diet dan pola pangan harapan menggunakan metode green development. Hadirin yang sama saya hormati, dalam kesempatan yang baik ini kami ingin menyampaikan pengembangan komoditi hortikultura di Indonesia dalam mendukung healthy diet yang ada. Saat ini kami mengembangkan 566 produk komoditi hortikultura, termasuk sayuran, buah-buahan, bioformaka, dan ornamental plants. Salah satu strategi utama yang kami lakukan untuk meningkatkan produktivitas dan daya saing komoditi hortikultura melalui pengembangan kampung hortikultura, one village, one variety. Kami juga mendorong pertumbuhan UMKM dan penguatan digitalisasi melalui pengembangan sistem informasi produk hortikultura. Di program Kampung Horti, kami melakukan pendampingan intensif dari hulu hingga hilir, serta fasilitasi akses permodalan, mekanisasi, irigasi, kelembagaan, pemasaran, dan lain-lain yang dibutuhkan. Diharapkan ke depan kampung Horti ini dapat ditingkatkan menjadi kawasan korporasi untuk memenuhi kebutuhan dalam negeri dan ekspor, serta pengembangan agrowisata dan agro duwisata. Untuk memenuhi pasar ekspor, tantangan utama produk hortikultura menyangkut aspek kualitas, menyangkut aspek harga dan aspek standar. Ada standar SNI, ISO, HCCP, dan lain-lain. Sertifikasi GAP dan GHP organik, serta aspek keamanan pangan lain yang dibutuhkan. Hadirin yang sama saya hormati, salah satu komoditi unggulan yang berpotensi menjadi one priority produk Indonesia adalah pisang. Pisang merupakan buah yang kaya akan nutrisi berupa karbohidrat, protein, terlemak, kalsium, besi, vitamin B6, dan C, serta kalium. Pisang memiliki prospek pengembangan baik karena memiliki nilai ekonomi tinggi dan berpotensi pasar yang makin sangat terbuka dan luas. Data FAO tahun 2020 menunjukkan Indonesia merupakan negara produsen ketiga tertinggi di dunia dalam jumlah produksi pisang terbesar, yaitu 8,2 juta ton. Namun baru mampu mengekspor sekitar 12,3 12, ton pisang atau peringkat 30 dunia. Volume ekspor pisang mendukung posisi kedua tertinggi setelah manggis di Indonesia. Dari sisi posit, potensi, Indonesia memiliki keragaman kultufa, kultivar pisang yang tinggi, yang berjumlah sekitar 325 macam, baik pisang budidaya maupun pisang liar. Hingga tahun 2021, terdapat 56 kampung pisang yang telah dikembangkan dengan skala ekonomi. 
dari aspek green development kami masih terus mendorong penerapan GAP dan GHP dan registrasi kampung pisang untuk meningkatkan traceability-nya. Sebagian besar budidaya pisang telah menerapkan green produksi melalui sistem budidaya organik yang menjamin kualitas pisang yang makin baik. Diharapkan ke depan kami dapat memenuhi tingginya permintaan di pasar global itu. Bapak dan hadirin sekalian saya hormati. Dalam hal ini kami mengapresiasi berbagai inisiatif FAO untuk memperkuat sistem pangan dan pertanian termasuk melalui inisiatif One Country One Priority produk ini. Kami berharap kolaborasi tersebut dapat menghasilkan model pertanian inovatif yang dapat dijadikan sebagai acuan bagi negara-negara di kawasan ini. Kami juga mendukung expected output yang akan dihasilkan dari inisiatif ini, termasuk dukungan kebijakan, kelembagaan, platform akses pasar, inovasi dan teknis untuk green development secara berkelanjutan. Kami siap berbagi pengalaman dengan FAO dan negara anggotanya tentu untuk mendorong pengembangan komoditi prioritas pertanian yang berkontribusi dalam pencapaian Agenda 2030 tujuan pembangunan berkelanjutan. Terima kasih atas segala perhatian. Sekian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We thank His Excellency Searul Yasin Limpo, the Minister of Agriculture, Indonesia, for those remarks. Before we move on to hearing from His Excellency, the Minister of Agriculture and Fishery in Samoa, we will quickly have a group photograph of all other dignitaries who are present here today. So can we just have the gallery view, please, and have a quick photograph and then we can move on to the next one. Uh, I recommend everybody switch on their cameras and have your smiles as wide as possible. Can you switch to gallery view, please? OK, so secretary, let me know when the photo is done. Okay. Thank you very much for staying for that photo. Now we will the program. At this point, again, it is our honor to invite the Honorable Loitea Polotaiwao, the Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries from Samoa in the Pacific region. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us at this late evening hours. Over to you. Samoa, can you hear me, please? Okay, while we wait for them to come back online, we will uh, then invite the Honorable Minister from Thailand. Oh, are you there? Yeah. Yes, uh, Your Excellency, please go ahead. Oh, Thank you, you very much. Do you hear me properly? Yes, we do. Yes, we can. Hello? Yes, okay. Greetings and talofalava to you all. Madam Beth Bedstorff, Deputy Director General of FAO. Mr. Chang Kim, Assistant Director General of the Region Representative of FAO Office.
uh, we seem to have lost the connection with Samoa. So while they are getting ready again, uh, we will now have the speech from the Honorable Minister for Agriculture and Cooperatives of Thailand. His Excellency, Mr. Chalam Chai Sri On. Uh, he has kindly sent us a video message. So Secretary, please play the message. Thank you. It is indeed an honor for me to be invited to say. Thank you, 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 Thank ภายใต้แผนยุทธศาสตร์ระยะ10ปีฉบับใหม่ของ FAO ที่มุ่งเน้นการพลิกโฉมระบบการเกษตรและอาหารที่มีประสิทธิภาพครอบคลุมยืดหยุ่นและยั่งยืนมากขึ้นโดยไม่ทิ้งใครไว้ข้างหลังกระทรวงเกษตรและสหกรณ์ได้ดำเนินนโยบายการเกษตร 3S ว่าด้วย 1. ความปลอดภัยของอาหาร 2. ความมั่นคงของภาคการเกษตรและอาหารและ 3. ความยั่งยืนโดยสนับสนุนวาระแห่งชาติตามกรอบยุทธศาสตร์โมเดลเศรษฐกิจ BCG ที่มุ่งเน้นการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจชีวภาพเศรษฐกิจหมุนเวียนและเศรษฐกิจสีเขียวของภาคการเกษตรและอาหารนอกจากนี้กระทรวงเกษตรมีการดำเนินงานพัฒนาภาคการเกษตรในรูปแบบระบบเกษตรกรรมยั่งยืนเน้นการพัฒนาแบบบรูรณาการทรัพยากรธรรมชาติทั้ง5อย่างเข้าด้วยกันได้แก่ระบบนิเวศดินป่าไม้ที่ดินและน้ำโดยการพัฒนาในรูปแบบนี้จะครอบคลุมถึงวิถีชีวิตของเกษตรกรกระบวนการผลิตและการจัดการตลอดห่วงโซ่เพื่อให้เกิดความสมดุลทางเศรษฐกิจสังคมสิ่งแวดล้อมและระบบนิเวศนำไปสู่การพึ่งพาตนเองและการพัฒนาคุณภาพชีวิตของเกษตรกรและความมั่นคงทางอาหารนโยบายเหล่านี้มีความสอดคล้องกับแผนดำเนินงานระดับโลกเพื่อการพัฒนาอย่างยั่งยืนที่ประเทศไทยให้การสนับสนุนมาโดยตลอดตามแผนงานการพัฒนาสินค้าเกษตรชนิดพิเศษสีเขียวหรือ SAP ให้เป็นผลิตภัณฑ์นำร่องในโครงการหนึ่งของประเทศหนึ่งผลิตภัณฑ์นั้นประเทศไทยมีสินค้าหลายชนิดที่มีศักยภาพและมีคุณสมบัติเป็นสินค้าเกษตร SAP ได้หลากหลายชนิดกระผมขอแลกเปลี่ยนประสบการณ์ตัวอย่างการพัฒนาสินค้าเกษตร SAP ได้แก่พื้นผักสมุนไพรที่มีการใช้ประโยชน์หลากหลายทั้งในการประกอบอาหารเพื่อสุขภาพยารักษาโรคอาหารเสริมและเป็นผลิตภัณฑ์เวชสำอางทำให้ความต้องการผลิตภัณฑ์สมุนไพรเติบโตอย่างรวดเร็วทั้งตลาดในประเทศและต่างประเทศกระทรวงเกษตรและสหกรณ์ดำเนินการสนับสนุนและส่งเสริมพืชผักสมุนไพรไทยมาอย่างต่อเนื่องมีการนำ BCG โมเดลเข้ามาร่วมพัฒนาในด้านเศรษฐกิจฐานชีวภาพเน้นใช้วัตถุดิบหลากหลายผสมผสานภูมิปัญญาท้องถิ่นส่งเสริมการผลิตที่มีมาตรฐาน GAP การวิจัยและพัฒนานอกจากนี้การปลูกพืชผักสมุนไพรยังช่วยอนุรักษ์ความหลากหลายทางชีวภาพและสนับสนุนการรวมกลุ่มของเกษตรกรสร้างความเข้มแข็งให้กับชุมชนและสร้างความมั่นคงทางอาหารและพชนาการสุดท้ายนี้ผมและรัฐบาลไทยขอเน้นย้ำความสำคัญของความร่วมมือในการแลกเปลี่ยนเรียนรู้และสนับสนุนโครงการหนึ่งประเทศหนึ่งผลิตภัณฑ์ให้เกิดเป็นผลลัพธ์อย่างเป็นรูปธรรมซึ่งจะเป็นส่วนหนึ่งในการบรรลุเป้าหมายการพัฒนาที่ยั่งยืนเพื่อนำไปสู่ระบบเกษตรและอาหารที่มีความยั่งยืน
สำหรับเราทุกคนขอบคุณครับ Thank you, Excellency, the Minister of Agriculture and Cooperatives in Thailand. We will now go back to Samoa, uh, who unfortunately we lost connectivity a few minutes ago. Uh, but Samoa, can you now, uh, Your Excellency, can you please now speak, if you can hear us? Your Excellency in Samoa, can you hear us? Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Madam Beth Benslow, Deputy Director General of FAO, Mr. Chan Chin Kim, Assistant Director General, and Regional Representative of FAO Office for Asia and Pacific, Your Excellencies, Ministerial Colleagues, Distinguished FAO Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is indeed with great pleasure for me to be invited to say a few words on behalf of our government and our country on the launching of our green development for special agriculture products. One country, one priority product for our Asia and Pacific regions. Food remains as integral part of our salmon culture, its ties with our land and ocean. However, increased dependence of imported processed food, fueled by changing dietary habits, vulnerability of our climate change, rising burden on communicable diseases, and inherent limitation of our small island economy, both challenges in ensuring our food security and nutrition, which can cater for our growing population of our future generation. We are also living in unprecedented time due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has created a new norm for our lives and has resulted multiple challenges as health, economy, social and political, all empowering to us at the same time. The COVID-19 metric has amplified many of these challenges, resulting in further reduction of our food and income securities due to financial pressure and regularly disruptions in our food supply chain. Samoa is now facing health-related challenges for our community spread of the virus, in addition to our social economic impact that has been felt across to our island country. Samoa has recently launched its five-year national development plan called the Pathway and Development of Samoa 2022-2026. And one of our key priority strategy is the realization of the replicant of sustainable affects culture, fisheries, and agriculture sector, which will create employment, improve of our food nutrition security, and reduce of resilience of food import. Also, with the support of FAO and other UN agencies, Samoa has completed its National Food System Pathway 2030 which paved the way to transform our food system for resilience of healthy Samoa and also help us to achieve relevant goal of our 2030 agenda. Given the severe impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our other key economy sector, our tourism industry, we are looking to increase our agriculture fishery export for new foreign exchange earnings and food import substitution in addition to our life to be food nutrition secured. This is to include promotion of upgrading of our current farming practice to mechanize farming and to assist our less resourceful farmers and land preparation activities that were sustainable and environmentally friendly. Further, Due to the expected severe of our long-term impact for the climate change and COVID-19, 
we have established a district development fund scheme to develop our rural communities and increase our agriculture and fishery productions to maintain our food and nutrition security and increase our import substitution and export effort. As part of our government effort to support these economic developments, we are in the process of establishing our import and export authority to realize our vision in increasing export, value addition, and import substitution. Now, most of our agriculture productions for our food and nutrition security, import substitution, and export effort for new foreign exchange earnings including horticultural crops, which mainly fruits and vegetables, and cash crops, mainly taro and other root crops. Cover products from our cocoa and coconut resources, such as chocolate, cocoa paste, and our popular cocoa samoa, organic virgin of our copra oils, and coconut creams and products from our taro and breadfruit resources, such as taro and breadfruit chips and breadfruit flour. These locally produced and processed agriculture products target mainly to our Samoan community and other Pacific Islands living abroad of some of our most popular and our European consumers. Further, some of those crops as divided products have unique quantity and especially characteristic associate with salmon farming practice with our culture heritage. And so I recommend for the pre-development of special agriculture products or one country, one priority products initiative that will direct some policy attention to share good practice and nutrition to our health benefits and consumptions for them. Their consumption will be promotion of diversity balancing health, diet, and health style, and reducing loss and waste of local grown food. We are implementing numerous development projects in agriculture space with financial and technical support of our development partner, including FAO, to support our farmers and fishery, increase their productions and productivity through the application of various production, technology, and digital initiative and addressing vulnerability of agriculture and food nutrition due to climate change and COVID-19 pandemic. All these projects aim to support our farmers, fisheries and other key players of our food chain value, transform our food system to support our productions and our healthier diet and increase of our import substitution and export effort. We look forward to the development of our new project under the first phase of this initiative in collaborations with FAO and Custom Cutting Association, focusing of one, two priority products that will promote as salmon made products. We also look forward to the second phase, including the green development for the livestock, agriculture and fishery especially to agriculture products as have the new products unique to Samoa and significant to our life foods and our culture heritage. In closing, I would like to acknowledge FAO for this great one country, one priority product initiative, and also for the FAO sub region office for the Pacific for the ongoing financial technical support for our Pacific countries. I wish you, Madam Deputy Director General and Assistant Director General of FAO, Your Excellency, my ministry colleagues, FAO and staff of all participants, God blessing and may the peace of our passing to all understanding to keep your hearts and mind in his knowledge and love for his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency, Honorable Minister of Agriculture and from and Fisheries from Samoa for giving us that very important perspective, particularly from the point of view of the small island developing states who are an important focus area for FAO. We shall now hear 
from His Excellency Li Xinjiang, Chief Veterinary Officer, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Affairs of the People's Republic of China. Your Excellency, over to you. 尊敬的贝斯、贝克多副总干事、新中贞助理总干事、夏静元先生、各位部长、各位同事、女士们、先生们，大家好。很高兴出席今天的启动会。首先，我代表中国农业农村部对联合国粮农组织亚太区域一国
，推动行动形成全球的合力。最后，预祝一国一品全球行动为世界粮食系统转型做出积极贡献。谢谢大家。Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Li Zinsheng from China,、uh, for providing us a very good idea on what on the program in China and the prospects going forward in this region. So, from China, we move to a neighboring country, which is Lao People's Democratic Republic, and we have His Excellency, Mr. Tongpat Wangmadi, the Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Forestry, who will give his remarks. Over to you, Your Excellency. Hello, Bob. Yeah. Excellencies, ministers, honourable Mrs. Bed, hold on, Deputy Director General of FAO, honourable Chong Jin Kim, Assistant. Director General and Regional Representative, FAO Regional Office for Asia and Pacific. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and the Government of Laos, I am honored to be part of the Global Action on Green Agriculture and Products, One Country. One priority products of the FAO Regional Office for the Asia Pacific. The initiative of the FAO Regional Office for Asia Pacific on global action on green development of species, agriculture, and products. One,、uh, one country, one priority product, OCOP, provide a very useful platform for. Exploring and sharing our ideas and experiences. <coughs> In addition, this program, <coughs> excuse me, have been also provide direct benefit for small holders. From our perspective, Ilao PDA, the program been focused on the comparativeness, com comparative advantage of the country. And make it more profitable for the country and、uh, producers. The program will likewise discuss the application of innovative ideas, scientific knowledge, and digitalization in agriculture. On along the value chains from farm to fork to bolster agri food system. Transformation. This transformation, this transformation entail focusing on climate resilience solution, also an area of focus of the program. Needless to say that this initiative will encourage country. We seem to have lost the connection with Lao PDR. Okay, I don't see them right now. So,、uh, without any further ado,、uh, we'll go back to them if they come back online. But we'll now move to another country in the、uh, another small country, which is Bhutan. So I now invite from from Bhutan the Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest, Mr. Tinley Namgyal. Mr. Namgyal, over to you. Thank you,、uh, Excellencies, FAO officials, representatives of partners, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. On behalf of the Royal Government of Bhutan. And the people of Bhutan, I would like to offer my heartfelt greetings to everyone present in this launch event and beyond. I take this opportunity to convey the warm greetings of His Majesty the King of Bhutan, His Excellency the Prime Minister of Bhutan, 
and His Excellency, the Minister of Agriculture and Forests of Bhutan, to all the distinguished delegates. I would also like to convey the apologies of my minister for not being able to attend this very important session due to some urgent assignment. In his place, it is my honor to address at this special occasion of the regional launch of the Global Action on Green Development of Special Agricultural Products, SAPS, One Country, One Priority Product in Asia and the Pacific. Bhutan is proud to be a part of the One Country, One Priority Product Initiative, and we are pleased to inform that we have identified Kinawa as the crop for OCOP. Kinawa was first introduced in Bhutan in 2015 through FAO support, mainly to reduce nutritional gaps. We are promoting Kinawa as a nutrient-dense, climate-resilient, and economically viable crops across all agroecological zone in Bhutan, and lately as potential niche organic crop for the export market. Bhutan has established quinoa as one of the key national commodity program to harness its multidimensional benefits. Due to the versatile capacity of the crop to adapt to different growing condition, quinoa has successfully adapted to the challenging mountain farming environment where various abiotic stresses like various varying precipitation, dry spells, extreme temperature regimes, and frost limit farmers' choice of food crops production. Kinawa has been selected as OCOP to enhance food and nutritional security of the Bhutanus people. To diversify the cropping and food basket, it is a climate resilient and a versatile crop for a diverse agroecology, as well as a potential export crop for income generation for farmers. There is potential to increase production and improve marketing efficiency through technology intervention in production and value chain. As part of the OCOP initiative, we seek FO's technical support to provide innovative solution for Butunis Kinawa to address the existing challenges and to improve productivity, profitability, and sustainability. Given the very fact that quinoa is a new crop for Bhutan, we seek support in these areas from FAO and partners. Increase production and improve productivity. Interventions are short right from accessing high yielding germplasm and germplasm diversification the adoption of smart agriculture, precision farming with land development, mechanization and automation, smart irrigation system, development of aggregation and processing facilities. Number two, improve value addition, market access and trade. Supporting Bhutan to develop tailor-made strategy connecting quinoa production, value addition, quality assurance, certification schemes and trade. Bhutan would like to establish geographical indication regime to protect and promote trade for quinoa and many other special agro products and apply innovative technologies to trace the origin of our special products. This would greatly help us to penetrate wider markets for higher profitability and better income for rural communities. Such interventions will not only provide added resilience to climate change, improve food security and nutrition, attract and engage youth in farming, but also help to mainstream gender into farming. Therefore, to address these key challenges and issues, Bhutan would like to enhance collaboration and seek collective support from FAOs, donors with research institute, academia and private sector. The Royal Government of Bhutan has connected OCOP to another FAO program of the Hand in Hand Initiative for synergies and coherence in governance where we want to pursue crops such as asparagus, strawberry to boost the production. We are highly hopeful that adopting Kunawa as Bhutan's OCOP will improve food security and nutrition security and also ensure better income for a better livelihood for the rural communities. 
Our production is also aimed at benefiting our fellow countries in the region, mainly in terms of creating access to high value and nutritious food and thereby jointly help achieve the targets indicated under SDG 1, no poverty, SDG 2, zero hunger, and SDG 10, reduce inequalities. We would also like to urge the private sector and business entities to explore and connect with our farmers to allow farmers to benefit from business opportunities and to build up farmers' cooperatives. Your role will perhaps be the most critical to integrate quinoa farming into an efficient marketing system to help Bhutan to build marketing information system, market analysis, market access, and trade facilitation. You will not only be a precursor driving production to increase food availability, but also could play a key role in transforming food supply chain to be resilient, inclusive, and sustainable. We will strive to work hard to build a global reputation as a proud producer, consumer, and exporter of quinoa. At the same time, Bhutan would like to announce that our farmers are seriously pursuing organic farming and would like to request the private sector and business entities to kindly come forward to take part in the supply chain. Finally, I take this opportunity to thank the FAO for all their support and we look forward to working closely with everyone in implementing the green development of special agricultural products, one country, one priority product. I thank you all for your time and attention. Tish Deller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Namgyal, uh, for not only outlining what is Bhutan's priority, uh, but also the linkages with other programs that are ongoing in your country. Uh, we will go back now to Laos. Uh, apologies, we lost the connection, but now we see His Excellency is back online. So Excellency, please resume your remarks. Over to you in Laos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, Excellencies, Ms. Uh, Deputy Director General of FAO, Mr. Chong Jin Kim, Assistant Director General, and Regional Representative, FAO Regional Office for Asia Pacific. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and the Government of Laos, I am honored to be part of the global action on green development of special one country, one priority products of the FAO Regional Office of Asia and the Pacific. The initiative of the FAO on global action on green development of special agricultural products one country, one priority products provide a very useful platform for exploring of ideas, experiences. In addition, this program will also provide direct benefit for smallholders. From our perspective, in La PDR, the program will focus on the comparative advantage of the country and make it more profitable for the country and the producers. The program will likewise discuss the application of innovative ideas, scientific knowledge, and digitalization in agriculture on along the value chains from farm to bolster agri-food system transformation. The transformation entails focusing on climate, climate resilience solution, also an area of focus of the program. Needless to say that this initiative will encourage country ownership, strengthen collaboration, and establish sharing of technical expertise among members in the region. It will also support practitioners in the country to access market information, production, technology, and applying 
agricultural innovation in the businesses. The Lao National Socioeconomic Development Plan uh, 9 from 2021 2025 endorsed last year is the master document guiding government policy and it focuses on six priorities areas for agriculture, including the promotion of agriculture and as a sustainable sector, the increase of agricultural production and improve access and use of technology to increase agricultural productivity. Key challenges that need greater attention as part of the recovery effort within the framework of the uh, nine national social economic development plan are the impact of the COVID-19 and recovery measures. Current state of agriculture, natural resource management, food security, and nutrition. Some key areas that need special attention, such as the pro promotion of climate resilience, agricultural practices, agroecology, participatory land use planning, agriculture innovation system to, to promote sustainable production for niche market, development of technological capacity to improve and maintain agricultural productivity. Please allow me to take this opportunity to thank FAO for continued support and excellent contribution to allow development and also to highlight some of our key priority for FAO support. First, implementation of the nine national socioeconomic development plan with close alignment to uh, of FAO programming, strengthening capacity from national to community levels, including scaling up, digitalization advance, and innovation, innovation for farmers, such as integrated regional market sharing system. Expertise exchange and South-South and triangular cooperation to bolster Lao PDA capacity. Small holder farmer and vulnerable demographic groups, women, youth, ethno-linguistic, as focus of intervention, especially to address recovery from COVID-19 impact on rural livelihoods. Continue hand-in-hand -hand support for development of green growth economic corridor, especially since the Lao PDR has gone from landlocked to landing in December 2021. The initial idea for one product from Lao PDR for the inclusion into the OCOP process is coffee. Uh, Lao produces around 80,000 tons of coffee every year, and around 60% of it is exported mainly to Thailand, to Vietnam, and to some EU countries. Black coffee has been registered as EI products, is free from chemical use, and mainly employ women. Therefore, it does not only have a unique place in the global coffee market, but also transfer income into the most vulnerable segment of Lao society. Coffee has the potential to transform the livelihood of the large number of poor households and the benefit in spin off to other sectors such as health, nutrition, and education. I would like to mention that coffee is the source of income for communities in Lao Highland that have otherwise limited source of income. On behalf of the Ministry of 
our concern for us today and the government of Laos, PDR. Once again, I wish a great success to this event and good health, resilience, and prosperity to our host and the regional country dedication present here and attending virtually. The Lao Pupidia would uh, looking forward to a successful continued working relationship with FAO and our partners to attain better production, better nutrition, better environment, better life, and leaving no one behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. From La, the Honorable Deputy Minister for Agriculture and Forestry of Lao People's Democratic Republic. Uh, for our final speaker uh, representing our member states will be Solomon Islands. And we have Ms. Ethel Francis, who is a permanent secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock of the Solomon Islands, who will be speaking to us and giving her perspective. Over to you, Ms. Francis. Thank you. Deputy Director General of AO, Beth uh, Bechdol, the Assistant Director General, Jong Jin Kim, Excellencies, Distinguished Ministers, Participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor to come in on behalf of our minister who is unable to be here, but send his apologies for missing this important event. So we want to thank the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations for extending an invitation for Solomon Islands to join in and share some remarks in the launching of this great initiative. The one country, one priority product for Asia and the Pacific region. Solomon Islands is grateful that it was proposed as one of the pilot beneficiaries for this initiative. So we wish to register our country's appreciation. This one country, one priority product initiative has the right structures to enable the much needed transition of agri-food systems in our countries to more efficient, inclusive, resilient and sustainable systems. And we anticipate and look forward to the benefits this initiative is designed to offer for better production and value chain of food system that can help minimize crop yield losses, food losses, and maximize farmers' economic gains so farmers can live on their farming sustainably. Solomon Islands National Task Force on the one crop, one country, one, one priority product under the leadership of the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock has selected cassava as its special agricultural product because this crop has huge potential for mass production and secure our food supply. For the reasons that it is suitable for our climate, it can grow easily anywhere around our many islands and is a whole year seasonal crop. The crop is regarded as one of the second choice for household around the country, but its climate and local resilient ability can truly be the food security crop for our islands. Its overseas demand can bring in foreign receipts to support our economic recovery efforts. So the government has already invested into commercial farming of the crop and processing infrastructures with plans to develop this to become one of our cheapest healthy food choice and to be one of the, our biggest agriculture export commodity in the future. So while the above is true of the product, there are a lot we do not know about this crop in terms of the value addition processing potential for local consumption and export, and even the variety to plant for export purposes or for animal feed or flour. So we know we can downstream process to flour and starch and animal feed, but how we do it is what we do not know. So we are excited about this opportunity to discover what this amazing crop can do to our families and nation. As a country, we rely heavily on imported food and rice is now becoming a staple food around the country, even in our rural communities. Rice is the biggest, is the highest imported 
agricultural product to Solomon Islands. The disruptions to global food supply chains caused by the COVID-19 global pandemic and now the crisis in Ukraine is very concerning, but at the same time is offering some tough lessons for us. We can no longer depend on other countries for the food security of our own people. Food security must be sustained locally. So we are happy to collaborate with FAO to scale up funding opportunities for this initiative, which will allow value chain development of this crop. Countries differ in their agriculture sector development phases. So we focus, so focusing on value chain development and tailor-made nation-specific solutions is a great start for us in the Solomon Islands. Solomon Islands is still at its infant stage in downstreaming or value addition space due to lack of proper infrastructures and market access. And Solomon Islands will need a whole value chain development for our selected product so it can deliver the anticipated outcome of this global action to reach our sustainable development goals. So the success of these global goals will depend on collective actions and investments, information sharing, and knowledge exchange of innovative technologies, technology transfer and good agricultural practices. So we support therefore the call for active participation and collective partnership in rolling out this one country one priority product initiative by all stakeholders who must contribute strong, strongly across our region. The Solomon Islands pledge its support to this great initiative and will do so by ensuring our selected implement, implementing partners. And at the moment, the custom garden association for the, coping, for the scoping study, and we are willing to partner with others to make this successful for Solomon Islands and this initiative. Solomon Islands is devoted to its global commitment to delivery of its sustainable development goals and is pleased to note the intention of this work and this initiative to help us deliver against our SDGs. In closing, I want to congratulate other easier and Pacific countries who agreed to be part of this initiative, which will truly offer an entry point for greater agro food systems transformations in our own country and our Pacific region. So excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me thank FAO again for this great initiative and wish you all the best with this implementation. May God bless us all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Francis, uh, for delivering those remarks. Um, and we thank also His Excellency, the Minister of Agriculture and Livestock of the Solomon Islands uh, for, for those kind words. So excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, while this has been an extremely rich webinar and we heard uh, a lot of experiences shared by the countries who've spoken so far, we have also uh, up almost 30 minutes behind time, but actually it points to the level of interest that we've got in this region. And we have all the participants in the webinar listening to every word very carefully and sharing a lot of information and comments on the chat and also asking questions. So please keep that conversation going. But we will now move on to our partner organizations in OCOP. And in the interest of time, I would request each one of them to keep their remarks to four to five minutes. So first of all, I invite Mr. Pema Gyamsho, the Director General of the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development or ECMOD. Over to you, Mr. Gyamsho. No, we can't hear. We can't hear you well. You need to be closer to the mic. Uh, is it better? Slightly better. Please go ahead. Louder. We can't hear you, sir. Um, Let me speak louder. Is that okay? Still can't hear. No, you're very far away. You sound very far away. Uh, uh, so that yes. what we do is I will ask my colleague. Uh, to read out from the office. I am out in the field and it's probably difficult to fix that. So would it be okay if I ask my colleague to read it out? Uh, read it's, my... it's okay now. Oh, okay. It's okay now. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yeah. 
the excellencies honorable ministers uh, assistant director general of fao and other senior officials from fao and partner agencies on behalf of the international center for integrated mountain development ECMO, i would like to thank you for inviting us to be part of this important event the launching of the global action on green development of special agriculture product one country one priority product ocop in the region of asia and pacific please allow me to take a brief moment to introduce isimod isimod is an intergovernmental regional learning and sharing of knowledge center on and for the hindu kush himalayan region that extend across 3500 kilometers covering afghanistan bangladesh bhutan china india myanmar nepal and pakistan our mission is to build and share knowledge that drives regional policies and actions to address transboundary issues and attract investments that enables our diverse member countries in the HK region to transition to greener, more inclusive, and climate resilient development. The Hindu Kush Himalayan region is often referred to as the third pole or water towers of Asia, as it has the largest area under ice and snow cover outside the poles and is the source for 10 major rivers of Asia. We refer to it as the pulse of the planet because what happens in these mountains not only affects 240 million people living in the mountains, but also an estimated 1.65 billion people living in downstream basins of the rivers. In the HKH region, around one third of the population is facing food insecurity of some form or other. Malnutrition is rampant, particularly among children and low income groups. Almost 40% of children below five years of age suffer from stunting and 35% of women aged between 19 to 49 years face anemia. Food and nutrition security in the mountain region is mainly impacted by topographical and climatic constraints, limited arable land, lack of adequate water for irrigation, shortage of farm hands, inadequate access to market, and other institutional services. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Hindu Kush Himalayan region is highly vulnerable to climate change in this risk, and these risks are likely to increase in future. Precipitation and temperature patterns are changing, and the incidences of extreme events floods and droughts are increasing both in terms of frequency and intensity. This has serious implications for mountain food system through impacts on water and energy availability, crop productivity, crop damages, land and ecosystems degradation. Another important area that requires attention is the financing mechanisms for sustainable agriculture. Current financing mechanisms are mainly encouraging inorganic practices in the agriculture and are reducing agrobiodiversity. Subsidies on a few food commodities originating from non-mountain areas, chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and lack of credit and insurance mechanisms for mountain crops are negatively impacting productivity. There is an urgent need to redirect and reorganize financial support systems for nature positive and sustainable practices, particularly for the mountains. Finally, I would like to commend FAO in coming up with this initiative to promote a priority crop for each country. After listening to all the presentations earlier from Director Jin Shuang Xia and Ms. Li Shuang, I am convinced that this will lead for more efficient use of resources, for example, land, labor, seeds, and funds better organization of supply of inputs, distribution, and value chain development. On the other hand, I think we have to be mindful that when we specialize on a certain crop, we are also increasing the potential risk. I think we have to have fallback mechanisms in place and be able to respond quickly to climatic shock, socioeconomic shock, and have those in place already. We hope that we can join hands with FAO and other partners uh, for taking this initiative forward, and we look forward to further strengthen our collaborative efforts towards a more sustainable, greener 
resilient development in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region. Thank you, and over to you, Siddharji. Thank you, Mr. Gamsho, and uh, we, I, I understand you are on a very tight schedule, but thank you for staying on and delivering those very important remarks. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, so we are now looking at different dimensions of OCOP, and Mr. Gyamsho just gave us uh, the perspective from mountain agriculture. So now we will hear from Professor Kadambhut Siddiq, who is the Agriculture Chair and Director of the University of Western Australia and an FAO Special Ambassador for the International Year of Pulses. Mr. Siddiq, over to you. Thank you. Dead. about the we heard a lot about the cropping system how do we implement this diversified system in order to meet the goal again i won't go into the details we have significant number of uh, people 811 million still hungry and it's increasing and significant number is in the asia pacific region and of course the pandemic has uh, really uh, put a dent and whether we are going to achieve the SDG2 is going to be in question. So the focus is in the Asia Pacific region. Shuan Li mentioned 381 million, but continue to face a high prevalence of malnutrition. So if you look at globally, the picture is very clear, but if you focus on Asia and also the Oceania region, there is still quite a lot of wasting and stunting. So for example, 75 percentage of wasted children in the low and the middle income countries, 64% in the standard children in the low and middle income countries. I leave the sub-Saharan Africa for this talk out. So what is the problem? High consumption of harmful food. So I won't repeat, processed meat to all the way to high starch and, uh, and, uh, and salt, et cetera. But low consumption of the so-called the diversity food, whether it is the fruits, vegetables, the nuts, the grains, and of course, uh, seafood. So this leads to unhealthy diet, malnutrition, and risk of non-communicable uh, disease such as uh, um, standard children, obesity, heart attack, and so on. So one of the problem is that if you look at uh, the futures of agriculture and food system, we heard relying on three or four staple food, wheat, rice, maize, in some of the member countries, Rice is the major staple food, and it has low protein and also significant amount of uh, starch. So therefore, we must diversify our food system. So if you look at, we really need to increase the food production, bridging the food production gap, no doubt about it. And if you look at the rate of yield improvement in major crops is one percentage or less than one percentage. That's not enough to meet the demand. More importantly, today's topic, the nutrition gap is the biggest problem. So we need to uh, address that. So the solution, you heard from many speakers, diversification is the way forward. So if you look at uh, the, the traditional underutilized crop or neglected crops, and there's a lot of benefits. They are nutritionally um, dense, climate resilient, adapted to harsh environments, and improves the biodiversity and culture, the tradition of making food. And we heard from many speakers, this can improve the livelihood and rural development and leading to social and economic development. Again, rich in macro and micronutrients, rich in vitamins and carotenoids. And with this reason, the FAO General Assembly declared 2013, we heard from Bhutan, Kunwa, uh, International Year of the Pulses 2016, and of course, uh, 2021, the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables. And I had the privilege to work with FAO as the special ambassador, and we addressed that as a result of the FAO's initiative, the pulse production has increased in many countries, particularly in India and a number of other countries. Here I'm just listing a number of neglected and underutilized crops. So cereals, amaranth to tatari buckwheat, then roots and tubers, pulses, fruits and vegetables, and nuts. 
So it's not a universal thing. You have to go into each country and each region and select the best for those particular countries. Here's an example, a foxtail millet, rich in micro and macronutrients, adapted to harsh conditions, drumstick, moringa, elephant foot yam, taro, which can tolerate transient water logging. Uh, Oceania, Pacific region, it's an important crop. I'll summarize this with uh, along with the Shu and Lee, a perspective article in the Nature Plants. If you want, I can send it. Uh, it's quite an interesting article where we're saying that uh, these are the forgotten crops. We need to bring them back in order to fight chronic and hidden hunger. Another study we did, people say that, how can we integrate in the farming system? So this is a study which we did in China with the 12 consecutive years. And we looked at the small farmers where in the cropping, and layer cropping can increase annual crop yields by 15 to 50 percentage, farm net income by 30 to 39 percentage, and environmental footprint, that's a carbon footprint, by 17 percentage. And so basically what's saying the issues are environmental concerns, high food demand, low arable land, scarce water, low farm income. What do we want? Increased crop yield, enhanced net income, reduced carbon footprint. And this can be achieved through Relay and cool season, warm season crop within field rotations, soil cover, uh, straw or plastic, in the case of China, best management practices. And this is really can be achieved with the smallholder farmers. The paper was published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, United States. So here is an example of a, a field pea planted in uh, spring and the maize is coming on. So the core benefit of what we call strip cropping can be done. So. The point I want to raise is that uh, it's time for us to integrate uh, this kind of crops into the mainstream crop and, and, and lead the way forward. This is another example from India where using satellite technology, GIS technology, digital technology, we can map out the fallow lands in the system, the traditional long duration rice, but improved production system, short duration, mustard, mung beans, sesame can be incorporated. And this is an example from West Bengal where rice, rice used to be the norm. So the fallow, November, February, you can bring lentils, which is a legume. And also fallow after rice in November, June, you can bring mung bean and uh, sesame and so on. So one more, two more slides, uh, Chairman, I know the time. So the food system, we need to look at the production, processing, distribution, marketing, and consumption. And we can intervene at different levels, diversified nutrition, labeling regulations, advertising, and food-based dietary guidelines. And we have good examples like quinoa, which has done. The ultimate benefit is healthier diets, reduction of uh, diet-related non-communicable diseases. But it's all interrelated. We can't go and touch one aspect. So on the one hand, production to consumption, but enabling policies. I know there's many ministers and excellencies are there. It is your role to enable the policy environment and also many of these crops doesn't have the institutional capacity because we spend a lot of resources on wheat and rice and maize, which we should, but it's time for us to have institutional capacity development in some of this crop, not only to develop, but also integrate in the system so that from value chain proposition can be done. So if we do all that, we can meet a number of uh, SDG goals, number one, number two, number six, number 12, 15, 5, 13, and 17. Basically improving livelihood, water and land productivity, diversification of food system, including consumption, conservation agricultural biodiversity, gender equity, adaptation to climate change, and national capacity development. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Siddiq. Uh, actually, that was a very nice perspective from the production point of view and the practices that are important for this program. So to bring us uh, the next point of view, and this time from the regional association, which is called the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, the SARC, we have the director of the SARC Agriculture Center in Dhaka, Dr. Mohammed Bakhtiar Hussain. Over to you, Dr. Hussain. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sridhar Dharmapuri, FAO Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific. His Excellency is participating minister high officials from FAO and dignitaries, 
distinguished speaker, participants, government officials, food systems expert, representative of the development partners, professionals, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone from Sark Agriculture Center from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm truly privileged and honored to be a part of the official launching event of the, the, the global action on green development of special agricultural products, one country, one priority products in the region of Asia and the Pacific. Even though human could eat more than 2,500 plant species, the mainstream agri-food systems across the world push only three major crops. There is wheat, rice, and maize, constituting the sources of more than 50% of the calories consumed globally. Obviously, agricultural production system based on so narrow biodiversity base are seriously threatened by both the biotic and abiotic stresses. Moreover, in the context of globalization and free trade agreements, food is increasingly commodified, subsuming into the market economy, thereby forcing people to more away from traditional, largely a localized and highly diverse consumption practice to an industrial commodity systems of universal mass consumption. This has resulted into a drastic shift in our everyday food habits, moving away from having a context specific, diverse and nutrient rich diets to homogeneous, highly processed, micronutrient poor and calorie dense limited food items. This has not only resulted into poor health and undernourishment, but also huge loss of agricultural biodiversity. It is not only that more than 80% of the 1.5 billion hectares of arable land globally are occupied by monoculture of less than a dozen of cultivated industrial crops, resulting into growing invasion of insect paste soil degradation, deforestation, depletion of fresh water resources, and chemical contamination leading to global environmental changes. Coming to the South Asian context, the region has impressive socio-cultural, environmental, and agricultural diversities with a broad range of topographic variation from high mountains, hills, valley to lowland, river basins, coastal plain, and most importantly, the Indo-Gagetic Indo area, which is the world's largest alluvial plain of fertile soils deposited by the river flood waters. As with the topographic diversities, the region has wide variation in climatic condition from humid tropic in the lowlands to cold temperature climate in the highlands, providing numerous unique ecology niches across the region. The agri-food systems in the region has, however, greatly been influenced by green revolution, strategies for productivity grown with the promoted rapid intensification of farming of limited field crops through excessive use of irrigation, synthetic fertilizer, agrochemicals, and high yielding varieties. The Green Revolution strategies have been successful in dramatic increases of yield of four major staple, particularly wheat, maize, rice, and potatoes, particularly in the favorable farming conditions in South Asia. However, over extractive and intensive farm practices of limited field crops under Green Revolution strategies has resulted into loss of biodiversity, soil degradation, water logging, increased salinity, alkalinity, alkalinity, fertility loss, water pollution, groundwater depletion, and other environmental effects, particularly due to overuses of fertilizer and chemical pesticides in combination with irrigation. The South Asian agri-food systems today has been facing interwind challenges of climate change threats 
along with long standing development challenges, widespread chronic poverty, hunger and malnutrition, sources degradation, socioeconomic inequalities, and poor infrastructure. Therefore, the agri food system in South Asia, as elsewhere, is persistently failing to adequately feed the people and to conserve and prosper the natural environment on one hand and is highly fragile and vulnerable to the unforeseen crisis such as pandemic and climate emergencies on the other. Building community resilience against climate induced disasters and attaining the sustainable development goal by 2030 is therefore a priority agenda of the development of all South Asian countries. So there has been an urgent call for a profound transformation of the agri-food system towards this end. Against this backdrop, launching of one country, one priority product in this region is an immensely important and timely initiative of FAO, particularly in the context of deepening crisis of mainstream agri-food systems. The OCOP initiative aims at promoting specialized agricultural products based on unique geographical locations, farming practice, and cultural heritage. I believe this initiative is broadly a part of support of food and agriculture organizations to the member states for the transformation of agri-food systems towards more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for a better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life with human welfare and climate outcomes. I'm confident that the SARC member states will take necessary steps to get benefit from this initiative. SARC Agriculture Center will collaborate with FAO to support, operationalize this initiative in South Asia Asian region. Finally, I thank FAO Regional Office of the Asia and the Pacific for providing me such an unique opportunity to share my views on this August gathering. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Sridhar. Thank you, Dr. Hossein, and for giving us the SARC, uh, the work mm -hmm. in the SARC region. So we now move on to uh, the private sector partner. And as you would all be aware that FAO in recent years has significantly increased its scope of partnership with the private sector. And we have Mr. Reginald Lee, who's the head of knowledge and programs in Grow Asia, which is an industry association. Over to you, Reginald. Thank you, Sridhar. Honorable ministers, director general, and distinguished delegates, good morning. And Grow Asia is honored to deliver a short intervention on promoting special agro products through innovative solutions in Asia and the Pacific. As Sridhar mentioned, Grow Asia is a multi-stakeholder platform for the agri-food sector. And we were established by the World Economic Forum and the ASEAN Secretariat. Our mission is to build public-private partnerships to broker market-driven solutions for more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable food systems in Southeast Asia. Goals that are very much aligned with the objectives of OCOP. So encouraging smallholders and farm family farms to focus on specialty, high value agricultural products represent an opportunity to level the playing field with larger agribusinesses operations that enjoy economies of scale. I like to think of it as not competing with industrial farming systems, but instead farming differently, choosing to do the things industrial systems can't do, such as intercropping, agroecological production, integrated pest management, and so on. And these play to the strengths of family farms who are more adapted to managing natural and human resources more intensively. Rather than large-scale agriculture's focus, on uniformity, mechanization, and mass production to minimize costs, specialty production focuses on maximizing value to the customer. Now, this focus on the customer or consumer is important to be able to unlock the value we seek from producing these special agricultural products. Consumers today generally share a growing concern for food health and safety, 
They want to know with confidence the conditions under which their foods are grown and processed about chemicals used or sanitation standards in foreign processing facilities. And in some ways, lessons from the use of geographical indications or GI, some of you have mentioned that already, offer some guidance. GIs are supposed to communicate to consumers that purchasing a product bearing a GI will deliver the advantages of an increased level of consistency and quality because they are produced in a particular location. And this requires not only effective marketing and consumer education, but also investment in inspection, testing, and certification to really deliver that quality assurance. And for government and policymakers, our recommendation is to focus on building that support system for the value chain selected through infrastructure, standards, monitoring, and finance mechanisms. We also know that agri SMEs in general are limited in their technical, financial, and organizational capacity to assess their suppliers and production systems, as well as to transform their products and processes. So technical assistance and incentives to encourage increased public and private sector investments in green supply chains, technologies, and other innovation solutions are important. What I can share from Croatia is that we're working through four program areas that will help green agriculture value chains. First is promoting agro-food innovation through in-country innovation hubs that accelerate adoption of climate smart solutions and farmer-centric technologies in Southeast Asia. Second is empowering women along the supply chain through gender sensitive approaches. Third is strengthening regional pathways and accelerating knowledge transfer and adaptation of climate smart practices. And lastly, promoting responsible agricultural investments through policies and best practices. So properly structured subsidies and fiscal incentives help firms make long-term investments by overcoming that upfront funding gap that often exists when they need to make changes to become green. We welcome opportunities to work together through our network and in-country partners to help implement your pilot projects under OCOP for integration, demonstration, and validation of green development practices. We believe that through multi-stakeholder collaboration, public-private partnerships, innovations and new models, gender responsive and climate smart approaches we can create a more inclusive, sustainable, and resilient world. We look forward to working with all of you to make the vision of OCOP a reality. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Reginald, uh, for giving us uh, the thoughts of the private sector and especially Grow Asia. So we now move on to one of our partners uh, in, in, our, in the multilateral system, the International Trade Center. And we have Mr. Robert Skidmore, who is the chief of the sector competitive section at the ITC. Over to you, Robert. Uh, hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Okay. Uh, to the FAO officials present, excellencies, distinguished ministers, esteemed colleagues, and delegates, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. And I want to thank uh, the FAO for inviting ITC to contribute to the discussion related to one country, one priority product. Uh, before I start, I wanted to give you a quick note on ITC. We're a UN organization based in Geneva, Switzerland. We're closely linked to, the, uh, to UNCTAD and the WTO, where uh, WTO provides a space to negotiate market access and UNCTAD supports policy development. ITC was created to help small companies in developing countries take advantage of markets to trade. Our role was really to make small business more competitive, uh, help them enter markets, and uh, help them increase the value that they're retaining. Progressively, we've grown to uh, an institution that focuses on trade to achieve development outcomes. And in our strategy period, 2022 to 2025, our executive director has positioned us uh, to, to organize all the work we do on competitiveness, really to, to combine uh, uh, our, our efforts and raise our level of ambition in four areas, uh, gender, youth, uh, green transition, and digital. So uh, with that, I think this program combines all those elements and I'm really interested to hear more about it. it. It brings a full value chain approach and a focus on transformation of food systems, which of course we're supportive of. For ITC, the focus on retaining more value at origin uh, for producers is especially important because we believe that increased value and the income generated is essential for the many of the, the elements of the programs 
including investment in more sustainable practices. If they have more value, they reach more markets, they'll have the resources in order to make uh, many of the investments necessary. We work on developing value chains uh, across the region in many such products. And I think we've had a lot of lessons learned which could be quite relevant. Uh, I lead a project, for instance, which is uh, funded by the European Union called the Growth for Rural Advancement and Sustainable Progress in Pakistan. On GRASP, we work at, uh, we have a full value chain approach. We work in uh, a dozen products across 21 districts of Pakistan. We have uh, a, a wide number of partnerships, including FAO, which is a core partner for us. Uh, and we have the, the benefit to be, to be able to include all elements of the value chain exactly as been described here. There's many others we work on. Uh, for instance, um, we work on the horticulture and other uh, special products in Bhutan, baby, baby ginger in Fiji, uh, coffee in, in, in many places like PNG Nepal and Nepal and, and many others. So, um, so that I think this is, this is an extremely relevant, uh, relevant uh, program for us. So I wanted to just throw in some, some lessons we've learned, which I think are very relevant. People have talked a lot about the, the agro uh, ecological and other elements that, that are part of this program. Of course, we're focused on the commercial part because you know, we, we need to think about markets. We need to think about where these producers are gonna be selling and how they're gonna be uh, obtaining that value. So the first thing uh, that, we, that we would say is think about market first before uh, diving into the program. Where is it gonna be sold? What are consumers' expectations? And how do we need to meet them? And uh, on GRASP, for instance, we did market studies we were particularly focused on this rising demand all over the world for more nutritious, more sustainable, uh, higher quality products. And this demand is what can help producers achieve higher incomes and better results. The second is, you know, uh, there needs to be an important collaborative process to determine which value chains with local actors and have it very tailored. And I think the program very much sees this need for it to be tailored uh, based on the local products, but also uh, the, the local aspirations and objectives of those who will, be, who will be involved. And it's that collaboration that creates the engagement later that makes the project su successful. Third, which people have mentioned, create alliances all up and down the value chain. This has got to be done with all actors, and in particular, the private sector needs to be on board and participating actively. Uh, and and I, uh, I think the intervention by Grow Asia and many others is extremely relevant. And that's a, that's a big focus of ITC through our Alliances for Action program which really makes the alliances the driving force uh, behind value chain development. We, we uh, ITC, we focus a lot on small and medium enterprise development. It is really the core of our mandate, internationalizing small and medium enterprises. And it, not just because of that, but we know SMEs really drive a lot of the change. They will drive the sales, they will drive improvements in quality, they will drive many, many parts of a successful OCOP program. So, I, uh, uh, I recommend it, keep SMEs in mind, think about how they're gonna be supported uh, through the process, think about how they can enter markets. If you have the SMEs supported and engaged, you're very likely to be, to be successful. We've heard it mentioned a couple of times, but you uh, also have to think about how these SMEs are gonna be able to obtain financing for investment and for working capital in order to support trade into the markets that they're targeting. Under GRASP, uh, through our partner PPAF, we've been able to assemble a group of 21 uh, financial institutions who are working with us to think about how to better tailor products and better understand financial products and better understand risks and how they can work to support uh, SMEs in the value chain. I think it's a super important element uh, for, for making these kinds of projects uh, commercially successful. And the last point uh, I'll make is that the, the these uh, companies and these products can't be competitive without thinking about digital first. So it's an old story. We know COVID uh, hugely accelerated the use of digital, the importance of digital, even the promise of digital uh, for, many, for, for much of the work we do. And we're delighted this has taken place. Uh, the trust in e-commerce, for instance, has skyrocketed uh, from consumers. But it's also increased the challenge that many of our small producers and small companies are, are facing and again, a couple, of, uh, a couple of colleagues have mentioned this digital transition uh, requires skills, it requires bandwidth, it requires also working across the value chain, for instance, to digitize supply chains, information, uh, marketing, positioning. So uh, how can, uh, what are some of the things I think we can, we can eventually contribute in, in such a partnership? Uh, market identification and market information. Uh, this is something we uh, you know, have uh, big online uh, global public goods 
that uh, producers and, and exporters can use to identify markets uh, that, that could be interesting. We do, uh, we have big relationships and a lot of alliances in the region and, and globally, which can help bring the buyers uh, closer to uh, the producers and to the exporters uh, and create these alliances that are, that are really necessary. Um, we uh, do a lot of work, of course, on making small businesses competitive and more sustainable and, uh, and developing quality and, uh, and uh, food safety systems, which can make, give these products, uh, help these products achieve the, the potential that they have. These systems are, are, are really critical. Uh, digital readiness and e-commerce for small companies. Uh, we've been doing a lot of it accelerating. So uh, this is something potentially we can also contribute. Uh, and I would say also, you know, the ITC's flagship program, She Trades, is really focused on helping women entrepreneurs uh, reach markets and to, to obtain finance, to understand better uh, things like quality. And uh, this is a, a network of, of 40,000 uh, female entrepreneurs that can be, uh, that, that can link uh, to, to programs like this. So thanks again for the, for the opportunity to participate. We look forward to hearing more and to, to eventually being part of these pilots and, and, and implementation. Back over to you. Thank you, Robert, uh, and some very good points made, and especially competitiveness is an important area of focus when you look at OCOP and the area of commodities. So excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we approach the end of today's launch event, there are three more speakers, uh, and then we will close the event. Um, I would request the, the, them to be in, to conclude their remarks in three to four minutes, because also our hardworking interpreters who have been with us since very early morning room time, they also need a short break. So I will uh, now invite uh, first uh, interventions from the floor. So first of all, we have uh, Dr. Mosamat Shamshun Nahar, who is the director of the Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute. He will speak first. She'll be followed by a representative from Vietnam who has just joined us online. And after that, the final speaker will be Mr. Jacqueline Shi who's the special advisor on South-South and Triangular Cooperation to FAO. So first, may I invite uh, Dr. Nahar from Bari in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Over to you, Manu. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sridhar, to give opportunity to talk something. I'd like to give my speech with sharing some slide. Uh, Dr. Nari, please go to settings on okay. top. Setting? Yeah, right on the, you say see display setting. Yeah, that one. And say duplicate. Is this OK? Yeah, please go ahead and okay. please conclude in four to five minutes. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Webinar, distinguished participant from different country. Welcome all of you to Bangladesh presentation on global action on green development of special agricultural product on country on priority product, that is OCOP from Bangladesh side. I am talking, Dr. M. Shamchun Nahar. I am working at Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute and serving here Director of Horticulture. So you know, Bangladesh located in uh, South Asia, and it is a small country. Bangladesh is a predominantly an agricultural country and has tropical and subtropical monsoon. So, this is some of the outline that I'd like to talk. It is my pleasure to say that Bangladesh, Bangladesh having diversity in fruits and vegetables crops, nearly 200 type of fruits and vegetables crop existing here. Among them, the jackfruit, it is a old highest fruit size, considering the size, and it is our national fruits. So we are thinking that, that the green development with this the jackfruit. 
jack fruit is why jack fruit so jack fruit is being a multi purpose tree that yields food fodder timber fuel jack fruit has played an important role in rural economy in bangladesh Archaeologists have estimated that it has been growing in Bengal for between 3,000 to 6,000 years. And each of every house, we have at least three to five jackfruit tree, and it is a source of energy. And the root leaves, fruits, pulp, bark, wood being utilized as medicine to aesthetic gratification, beautification. So considering the history of existence, utilization diversity, the fruit was declared at national fruits after independence. If we see the functional and medicinal effect of jackfruit, jackfruit is increased in protein, potassium, calcium, vitamins. And the jackfruit, it has the pulp is the main part of our, uh, that the feeding part. And the jackfruit is good for anti anti cancer properties anti cancer properties it prevent skin disease is prevent cardiovascular disease so so many things it is a beneficial use or it has the medicinal use so considering those jackfruit could be considered as a functional food because it has valuable compound in different part of the fruits that display functional and medicinal effect. So considering all things, Bangladesh proposing jackfruit one country on priority products for green development. So we know the uh, green development, there is a core direction of green development, green, pro, uh, green crop production system, integrated animal crops production system, then green food production and industry, rural environment and ecosystem services. So let's discuss jackfruit under this condition, under this um, condition, and there is also subsystem under this, the main component. So now, first of all, green crop production system and green crop production system include biodiversity, input management priority. So the biodiversity that the jackfruit biodiversity across the country, grow homestead, social institute, fruit tank, root and different, and it has also different color. If you see, it can, it can grow on trunk, it can grow on even root, and the color is different. Some of them is green, some of them is kind of reddish. So it has a diversity. That the edit, we eat the pulp, the fresh pulp of this the jackfruit. And if you see the color, then the texture size of pulp is different. So there is a variation or diversity existing in texture of the pulp of jackfruit. On the basis of the texture, the pulp texture, there is three types of jackfruit. One is gala. Gala is very soft. And the pulp of this type jackfruit is very soft and juicy. Durasa, this is the intermediate type of pulp. And it contains medium soft to soft, juicy, fairly sweet pulp when you try. And that the khaja, khaja is very hard. Pulp is very firm and crispy in nature. And medium sweet to sweet and the, that the pulp size is large. If we think about the, the production system, people practicing the wild production practice here, and that the conservation or wild harvest, and the, that the, this is the, our land preparation, a spacing we use here 10 meter to 10 meter for jackfruit tree, the bed and uh, drainage of jackfruit. It is a, a raised bed system. So traditionally, we are not using here any chemical fertilizer. So that is why we are calling it is a green production system. 
And in this green production system, we are not using any chemical fertilizer. We use only the organic, some of the organic fertilizer. It is up to three years and split application. So at the young tree during pruning and pruning in uh, that the increasing the foliage and carbon sequestration. Uh, Dr. Nahar, uh, I have to ask you, request you to please conclude. Okay. We have others waiting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Jackfruits, actually, this is sharing 25% of total fruit uh, production system, and it is hold in second in position, considering the their the production. So jackfruit, it is a uh, as I mentioned that jackfruit is a large fruit and when it ripe, it, uh, the people is sharing after ripening that the cow is eating and also it is uh, the crow, birds, squirrel and this is the green leaf. It is good for the, uh, for the goats. So the green food production and industry, this is, you can see the lot of product, industrial product, different type of value added product that producing from jackfruits. So there is also diversity in their seed and that the seed is contained, seed mash, that the seed powder is contained to lactin, lemony, jaglin, and artocarpin. The jaglin is provide or proved to useful uh, to the protein, uh, to the patient for uh, infected with human, uh, human uh, immunodeficiency virus. So if you see the rural uh, environment and ecosystem uh, that the the jackfruit we grow uh, this a uh, different layer. You have the eggplant, that the Burmese grape, the jackfruit. So this kind of foliage system can prevent or uh, protect our environment. So this is our jamplasm um, uh, maintained at Bari, and this is the variety developed by the institute, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute. So if you see the that the in daily star and two papers is telling that the, it, the gigantic crook is now exporting to UK, Italy, France, Greece, Germany, and some other European country and also Middle East, Middle East country. So it has a lot of scope to, uh, to, to, to come forward in our commercial production. So now the, uh, this is, though it is a, a very endless in nutrition, it is uh, still it's a neglected. So we need to attack the young people, modern food like curry, juice, chips, and we need to make, we need to give them more attention and in industrial product. So way forward for expansion of jackfruit cultivation, harvesting time of jackfruit in Bangladesh is very narrow. We need to increase the time here. There is huge potential of jackfruit making it available year round by the development, by developing the variety and development of appropriate processing and preservation technique for processed food to make available round year, year round. Processing and preservation will also lead to capturing, capture erasing uh, export market, but to achieve success in processing, preservation and export market, we need more in uniform jackfruit cultivar, especially latex-free jackfruit varieties required for uh, making chips. To capture the market in Japan, Malaysia, China, and also the other country need to develop non-sticky and fragrant jackfruit variety. Harvesting and processing of jackfruit is currently very laborious with little mechanization. So we need to work here. Explain expansion of jackfruit uh, farming with variety development, which could grow as a uh, lucrative business in the future, need proper mechanization for processing and value addition. Jackfruit market is not built in the country in new way to give maximum benefit to the local farmer this local uh, market development is important to focus on which ultimately can also provide countless opportunities as valuable export product. So finally, my conclusion and recommendation, 
that the innovative collaboration is prerequisite for jackfruit product based on green development for that the local regional global and global co uh, cooperation is necessary required to enhance in the uh, inter interdisciplinary research innovation innovation <clears throat> bottleneck the technology to improve the whole industry chain for, toward the green development. For this, we need uh, to pay attention. Government need to pay attention and um, move forward with the policy and law research that the innovation and development and also the dissemination or transfer this, uh, those uh, industrial product or some other product among all over the country and also need feedback. And industry should come forward with their product and services. So in this regard, I think the talent educated people should come forward and integrate of those things. That would be our jackfruit that I think the jackfruit will help us with that the green development. So thank you for, thank you for patience hearing. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Shamsun Nahar. So that was very interesting. And we actually would have liked to hear this for a longer time. But I'm sure as the program gets underway in Bangladesh, we will have a chance to go into much longer detail on how jackfruit can be an OCOP candidate. And this is very interesting to learn. So our next speaker is from Vietnam, is Mr. Nan Dang Kui, the deputy of the OCOP division the National Coordination Office of the NTP on New Rural Development from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Government of Vietnam. Over to you. Uh, could you please keep your remarks to a few minutes? Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Yes, I can share the document. Why I cannot share my document from the screen? Okay. Uh, you're not sharing the document, you're sharing your screen. Uh, okay, somebody there to help you? Sharing. The file that you want to show. Okay, I can uh, uh, speak. Uh, Thank you. Mm. Hi, Excellency. Um, good morning, good afternoon, lady and gentlemen from uh, different country. My name is Nyan, uh, Deputy of uh, OCOP Division. It's an honor for me to today to present uh, uh, some uh, uh, words about one commune, one products uh, program in Vietnam. Uh, firstly, I want to introduce um, Vietnam OCOP program based on experience of uh, uh, Japan, uh, OVOP, and uh, uh, from uh, OTOPS of uh, Thailand program, the Vietnamese guy, since uh, uh, 2030, some province of Vietnam has implemented one commune, one products program uh, with positive outcome and uh, contributing to economic development to improve in, uh, living standard in rural area. In uh, nine, 
in uh, 2018, the government of Vietnam implemented the OCOP program for the period uh, 2018 to 2020 nationwide. And uh, the characteristics of uh, OCOP program in Vietnam focus on develop local specialized products at village and community level with the objective increase uh, rural income and create more job locally, promote human resource and uh, preservation of uh, diversity culture. The OCO program in rural economic development program towards promoting internal resource such as rural wisdom, creative labor, raw material, and local culture increase uh, product value, raise income, uh, rural um, residents contribute to new rural development. The targets of produce a uh, small and medium enterprise cooperatives and household. The purpose of uh, OCOP program in Vietnam, firstly, is uh, encouraging rural production and business owner to fully utilize the potential of land products and comparative advantages to improve product values, increase income and contribute, contribute to improve living standard in rural area. And second is the reorganizing production through whole value chains and linkage with raw material products area applying advanced quality standard, uh, promoting start up and creative uh, in rural area to enhance uh, added value and sustainable develop. The thirdly is uh, uh, addressing employment, social security, reducing po um, poverty and raising income for people uh, in rural area as well as previous local country. Uh, the results of the uh, OCO program in Vietnam, uh, up to now, there are um, more than 7,000 um, uh, OCO products dated from star, uh, uh, three star or higher. Uh, Food product account for 80% and handicraft products account for 10%. And uh, with uh, more than 4,000 uh, OCOP producer with uh, cooperatives and small and medium enterprise account for 65% uh, fish. Uh, more than six the percentage of OCOP produce uh, with uh, three star or higher reported higher uh, uh, revenue. The OCOP program has contributed to job creation special in and to rules of women and ethnic minority. The some uh, lesson learned from Vietnam from uh, OCOP program. Um, firstly, Vietnam OCOP targets to village and commune level specialized products for SME and co cooperative to promote the, the development of unique, unique and special products. Second, <clears throat> the OCO program is organized synchronized uh, and nationwide creating and sleep lower effect in uh, community promoting spirits and uh, um, responsibility and capacity of produce combined with local advantage. advantage. Uh, thirdly, is, um, pro the program focus on improved product quality and market accessibility in order to meet uh, some uh, demand. The, Firstly, is developing OCO product along with culture dissemination 
exploiting an endogenous value uh, advantage to promote and introduce the local, regional, and national wine culture. Some uh, challenges uh, from the OCOP program in Vietnam and um, how to strengthen innovation, creative capacity, product development, and quality improve. Uh, how to support OCOP produce producer uh, through such a um, program as uh, fair chess and something like that. And how promote Vietnam OCOP to become international recognized standard and sustainable de develop. Fin finally, uh, uh, we have some proposal from Vietnam. Vietnam has proposed to initiative promoting the network for Asian rural product development, development on one village, one product model, which, were, which was approved by AMAP for uh, 42nd in 2020. Uh, power support and work with Vietnam to connect to him and mobilize, find, um, mobilize financial and technical assistance from international partners to support network establishment and implementation and organize national or international for forum affair uh, exhibition to promote special indigenous products thereby for fostering just link uh, and enhancing value sharing experience and promoting local culture. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Key. And uh, indeed, Vietnam has a very successful program already, and we look forward to learning more and sharing it with all the other countries. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we approach the end, I'd like to now invite the last speaker for today, Mr. Jochen Shi, who is the Special Advisor on South-South and Triangular Cooperation to the Assistant Director General of the FAO Regional Office in Asia and Pacific. Mr. Shi, please. Thank you, Chair Linda. I think South-South and Triangular Cooperation cannot be absent at this occasion. My name is Xiao Chun, the Special Advisor on South South and Triangular Cooperation in Europe. Uh, as my colleague Li Xuan mentioned earlier, OCOP aims to develop sustainable value chains for special agro products, SAP, and support family farmers reap the full benefits of a global market. South South and Triangular Cooperation as a very important partnership mechanism offers a lot of potential to engage and support the aim of OCOP. Firstly, knowledge sharing. Many countries in our region are world leading innovators of special agro products. For instance, the Japan's OVOP, Thailand's OTOP, and the geographical indications, and the China's poverty reduction strategy, Korea's rural convergence, industry policy, etc. Their experience is very valuable and transferable to other countries in our region who share similar farming systems and the social economic context. In the SSTC provides a suitable platform to exchange and learn from each other. Secondary capacity building, SSTC can leverage the technical law home and expertise from countries with similar experiences, contexts, and challenges. And uh, for instance, we have partnered with Korea counterparts to provide capacity building programs on agri value chains for agricultural professionals in seeds. It's ongoing now. And thirdly, partnerships. South South and Triangular Cooperation mobilizes technical and financial partnerships and the investment 
to bridge and complement the knowledge, technical and the financial gaps, as well as scale up solutions. And uh, just like Mr. Xia highlighted the, the key principles of OCOP initiative, a multidisciplinary approach and engagement with different stakeholders, government, research, extension NGO, and the PPP, et cetera. Firstly, resource mobilization. And in my role as a special advisor for South Southern Triangular Corporation in the region, I'm actively looking for the funding opportunities from Southern partners and the triangular partners to support corporate and the regional initiatives. And for instance, we are recently collaborating with China's development agencies to fund initiatives aiming to promote a green recovery in post covid 19 era, such as OCOP, etc. This includes mobilizing China's technical skills and the financial resources to enhance the green and the sustainable value chains for special agro products in LDCs and LLDCs in this region. Thanks for your attention. Over to you, Mathieu. Thank you, Mr. Sher, <clears throat> and for pointing out the role of SSTC in OCOP. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are one hour over time, but I think that signifies how much we've had to discuss, and there's still much more. We've probably not even touched the tip of the iceberg. So, and as you all know, OCOP is a program. It will continue. There's a lot to do. <clears throat> and we will have more opportunities to interact, both at country level and regional level. So uh, for, before I hand it over for the concluding remarks to Mr. Kim, I'd like to thank the interpreters for staying online for an extra one hour, and to our CSGM audiovisual services for providing an excellent technical uh, backup for this uh, webinar. So I now invite <clears throat> Mr. Jong Jin Kim, uh, Assistant Director General and Regional Representative of the FU Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific to conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you, Sir. Uh, first, uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, uh, and distinguished partners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for very rich and insightful exchange of uh, ideas, experiences on special agriculture products. Uh, I think uh, honorable ministers from South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and the Pacific uh, have demonstrated uh, the leadership and commitment to this uh, uh, very uh, uh, promising initiative. Partners from research and development organizations and the private sector have also showed common interest and the strong support to this initiative. I'm grateful for all those excellent presentations and the most valuable contributions. Particularly, uh, I would like to thank you for sharing uh, very interesting, specific, and very useful experiences, lessons, as well as uh, good policies, uh, which are obviously and very clearly well aligned to the key principles of uh, OCOP. It was really encouraging to note that uh, many of you have already identified and started to prioritize certain crops or animals in this OCOP uh, uh, program. There's clearly uh, uh, momentum building on uh, the national uh, policies and the concrete programs. I noted a few key areas and needs for support uh, from FAO, from your interventions, such as innovation, geographic indication regime, quality standards, certification, food safety, trade facilitation, and so on. In particular, I note that the, the innovative solutions 
are in high demand. I heard you, uh, you need uh, innovation, technology transfer to enhance productivity, competitiveness, and profitability for your special uh, agro products. I also heard your desire to strengthen traceability and certification uh, systems. You voiced very clearly the need for improve the legal systems for registration and protection at home and abroad. It was uh, really uh, particularly encouraging to hear uh, from uh, several intervention uh, of you that uh, the establishment of a regional platform to promote uh, knowledge sharing uh, on production, uh, processing, uh, marketing, trade of special agro products among members are uh, really, really important. And RAP, the regional office for Asia and Pacific, is working on this. I hope we can launch this platform uh, this year with the strong support from you, the member states. Please uh, allow me to repeat that OCOP is country inclusive, product inclusive, and food system inclusive. In this respect, I welcome all countries in this region to participate in this OCOP initiative based on your comparative advantage and your needs. Let me close uh, by thanking you again for your active participation and the excellent contribution to very rich discussion today. So thank you very much. Over to you, Sarita. Thank you, Mr. Kim. So excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> we'll now close this webinar. Uh, once again, thank you all for staying online an extra hour. And uh, we wish you a very good day, good morning, good afternoon, good night for some people and uh, we will continue to meet on OCOP and carry this program forward. Thank you very much, bye.